Pokemon Emerald Rogue is an awesome ROM hack that I've never played before, and it just recently came out with a massive 2.0 update. It's a roguelike Pokemon game with tons of unique dungeons that each lead you to a boss battle at the end of each round. I don't know too much about it because this was my first time playing Emerald Rogue, but the update really caught my eye with adding Gen 9 Pokemon, terrestrialization, tons of new routes to explore, plenty of customization options, full multiplayer support, and much more. Let's get to it! Starting up the game here, I'm asked to set the difficulty, which I just keep normal because this is my first blind playthrough. We get this awesome intro with Professor Element and all these Pokemon running around in the background. Then I get to this cool trainer customization screen, which I had no idea was in this hack. There are so many options with trainers from the different generations, and you can change the colors on all of them. With Hoenn being my favorite, I went with Brendan Sprite and chose red and gray colors, which look absolutely dope. I name my village the Crady Kingdom in reference to my Discord channel, link in description. Then I run around my village here with not much going on until I talk to Professor Elm and meet another NPC who introduces me to the starter Pokemon. My options were Moralil, Cufant, and Mankey, and I decided to go with Cufant because I always thought Copper Zhao was an awesome Pokemon in Sword and Shield. I love this little graphic animation every time you obtain items. I go ahead and check the billboard on the left, and it shows different quests I can complete to obtain rewards. Definitely reminds me of the Mystery Dungeon games. Now there's a few options for my first dungeon, and after reading their descriptions, I went with the Rocky course because I thought my Cufant might be super effective on some of the Pokemon here. I find some items and train up on these Aerodactyls and Dwebbles. It's so freaking cool that all the Pokemon are running around in the overworld, and I can encounter exactly which one I want, just like the newer Pokemon games. My Cufin is already at level 15, which is the level cap for this area, so I know I gotta catch more Pokemon. After a few weak trainers, I exit into the next area, where I find Tortugas in the overworld and decide to catch one. I also snag a Numble, so now I have a few Pokemon for better type coverage. I have to battle Mei at the end like a mini-boss, and she almost knocks out my Tortuga, but luckily all my Pokemon survived. Next I have the option of a few rest areas, and the one I chose sells competitive items and has a move tutor. I don't have too much money to buy things, but I did teach my normal flamethrower, which is some hot shit. I also figured out Pokemon can learn certain moves straight from the menu, so I teach Tortuga and Cufin some new moves as well. At the end of the road, it's now time for my first boss battle. These battles have different randomized gym leaders, and I ended up with Norman, so I guess it was time for some father-son bonding, because my trainer is from Hoenn. My Numble cooks this Lickitung for breakfast, then gets low on HP from a Meowth, and I just healed it with a Soda Pop mid-battle, so that almost felt like cheating, but honestly, fuck it. Out comes a Minchino, who I take on no problem with my Ancient Turtle. And there we go, I obtained my first badge, and now we're on to the next stage. This route has some useful items, and I turn up my Pokemon a little bit more. The level after that contains a battle simulator in which I have to wager something. I chose money, and if I lose, half my money gets taken away, but if I win, I get $5,000. I end up getting my ass kicked here by this Ampharos and had some shit Pokemon on my team, but whatever. I didn't lose any progress other than some money. Up next, I got the boss battle with Gym Leader Flannery. She leads with a Nummel that I one-shot with my Tortuga, then her Turtonator almost knocks it out, so I switch into my Nummel. Unfortunately, Nummel gets one hit KO'd by the Fiery Turtle from Draco Meteor, and so does my newest Pokemon Doduo, who also gets knocked out the same way. Son of a bitch, Flannery is tough, so the Tortuga comes back out and sweeps it with an Aqua Jet along with her last Pokemon, Slugma Balls. There's our second badge. Now I enter a catching contest where I have to find a Pokemon with the highest base HP stat to win. Obtaining Lickitung won me the contest, and up next is another rest area which contains a daycare. So, I go ahead and put in my Lickitung just to try it out. After healing up and looking around at my shops, I didn't know I was already on the next boss fight with gym leader Juan the Khan. I literally didn't enter any actual dungeons to train up for this, so I only had two Pokemon 10 levels lower than his. Damn Tatsugiri annihilated my only two Pokemon. GG for our first Pokemon Emerald Rogue run. Now completing some of the quests like obtaining badges gave me building materials, which I can use to expand my village with useful spots like move tutors and shops. It was now time for me to head out on my next adventure. I get the option of some new starter Pokemon, and I chose Trapinch because we all know Flygon is badass. We end up starting in Route 114, and I go ahead and train up by battling trainers and wild Pokemon. One Pokemon I come across is a Galarian Goon, and I add it to my team. I also see a Spiritomb in this route, so I go ahead and catch that as well. My next area to enter is another catching contest, in which I need to find the Pokemon with the highest defense stat. Searching through the grass, I caught a shuckle knowing damn well that that will win it. Of course, I made a good call and received 5,000 Poké Dollars for winning. In the next route, I came across a Turtonator, and I knew I wanted that thing for my team. 
I also caught a Quillfish and a Paldean Water-type Toro, so that was awesome. The boss battle is Gym Leader Norman once again, and at first he didn't seem too tough, but then his Lickitung knocked out my Trap Pinch after building up some rollouts, so that sucked because I really wanted a Flygon. Eventually I take him down without losing any more Pokemon, and we get our first badge. In the second stage of Dungeons, I first encounter a Bomb Birdier, which is pretty cool. There's still a lot of Gen 9 Pokemon I've never used before, so this was a great opportunity for me to do so. I then battle some more trainers, and then encounter a Stunfisk, which I also decide to catch. Then entering the next area, it looks a lot like Hoenn's Victory Road, where I find a Cub Chew, which is also added to my team. I also just learned you have to manually evolve Pokemon in this game, so I evolved my Zigzagoon. Once I defeated multiple trainers and exited that cave, I started giving my Pokemon some better held items like berries before going on to the boss. Here we have to battle against the gym leader with the big ass forehead, and he actually has a shiny Electrike, which is pretty sick. I'm able to take him on pretty easily without losing any of my Pokemon. This next path I take is like a Team Magma hideout, which just means all the trainers here are Magma Grunts, and they're all weak as hell. What's good about this place though is that there's lots of useful items. I eventually evolve my Linoon into an Obstagoon, then enter another catching contest. In this catching contest, I needed a Pokemon with the highest attack stat, and I chose Tinkatuff, which did not win me the contest, but I was able to add it to my team, and I swapped it out with Cub Chew. Up next is a simple rust area before challenging the next boss, which is Gym Leader Flannery. My Stunfist takes out her Larvesta and Camerupt with Mudshot, but then gets fucked up by Salazzle. My Obstagoon defeats the Salazzle, and my Paldean Water Tauros takes on her Paldean Fire Tauros. GG once again. All I lost was Stunfisk there, so I'm not too upset. In the next route, I catch an Alolan Grimer, which I'm able to evolve right away, and same with my Tinkatuff. I then spend some time teaching all my Pokemon better moves, because I know things are about to get a lot tougher. After some more trainers, I'm right back with another catching contest, in which I need to acquire a Pokemon with the highest defense. I found an Avalug and submitted that, which won me $5,000. However, I decided not to add it to my team. The next rest stop I go to is the one that sells competitively useful items, so I buy some and give them to my Pokemon. I'm now at the next gym leader, which is Juan and his team of water Pokemon. Things are going smoothly at first, until I attack a Gallus Pod with my Bombardier and off myself from the recoil damage. Damn it! I send out my pal Dan Tauros who cleans house with being super effective on his Walreen, and Aqua Jet takes on the low HP Gallus Pod. And there's our fourth badge. I now enter the habitat of a trained Pokemon, which is like a hidden grotto, and I battle a strong Dugong. I tried to catch it at first, but didn't want to waste all my Pokeballs, so I decided to leave it. My Paldean Water Tauros is already a champ, and I really don't need a new water type, but for some reason I still went ahead and caught a Wish Cache in the next route, but that's because I thought its ground typing might be useful. Nothing interesting happens in that route, and then I continue into another rest stop where I just throw my Wish Cache in the daycare, because why not? After this, I'm already at the next boss, which is Gym Leader Brawly. Now this is crazy, I lead with Turtonator using Shell Smash, then proceed to sweep his entire fucking team, no problem at all. Turtonator is a savage monster who ain't taking sh** from no one. And the next route I go into has some bug and ghost Pokemon, and after failing to catch a bayonet, I just moved on. The next place is a habitat with a Politoed, but that gets demolished by my Tinkaton. I enter the rest area with the Move Tutor and Held Item Shop, but I really don't need anything here because all my Pokemon are pretty much good as they are. This leads me to the next boss already, who is Roxanne. She leads with a Hisui and Avalug, and my dumbass wanted to set up a Shell Smash sweep once again, but that was not smart because that thing was a fire type. Her stupid Avalug has sturdy ability, so it survives a hit and knocks out my Turtonator. Damn it, I should have thought out this battle much slower and switch out. I send out Paldean Tauros and just go to town with this thing. Its water and fighting type moves are super effective on all her Pokemon. I'm really happy with how strong this Tauros is, and losing my Turtonator this battle was a huge loss. In this next area, I catch a Palmot for my team, then soon after I find a shiny one, and I really wanted it, and that motherfucker broke out of all my balls and I completely ran out. Damn, this sucks. So once I reached the rest stop right after, I made sure to buy more Pokeballs. I pull my Wish Cash out of the daycare, which is now level 70. Then I find this guy who trades you a random Pokemon, so I gave him my Wish Cash and received an Electrike. Now the next area I go to is actually the Pokemon Lab, which contains some of the Pokemon I previously owned. Hell yeah, I wanted my Turtonator back, so fuck that Electrike. Now I gave my Pokemon some held items and proceeded to the next boss, who is Leader Liza. With having Paldean Tauros in my first slot, I really should have switched out, but to be honest, for a moment, I totally forgot I was a fighting type, and this Jinx just one-shotted it. Damn it, I'm such a dumbass. Out comes the Obstagoon to knock it out, and then she sends out a Metacham, which destroys Obstagoon. The battle continues with me using a Alolan Muck, which has Dark Typing, but then she rocks my socks with a Metagross that knows Earthquake. Holy shit, I'm in trouble here. 
My Turtonator also kicks it from an earthquake, along with my Palmot, and eventually my Tinkaton as well. Son of a fucking bitch. Four of my Pokemon were weak to ground moves, and that Metagross barely survived being paralyzed, and it was on red HP. Lesson learned here, I need to spend a lot more time in the later game using more strategic movesets and have better overall type resistance on my team. But there we go for this run. Six badges ain't too bad, and I'm still very new to this rogue style of gameplay, so I'm only gonna get better in the future. I had a lot of fun with my first time experiencing Pokemon Emerald Rogue, and this ROM hack really impressed me. As a Pokemon GBA ROM hacker myself, I am blown away at the features this game offers on a technical level, with my favorite being the in-depth character customization and the wild Pokemon in the overworld. I can totally see why Emerald Rogue can be really addicting, and if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos of this hack. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.